uh, <laughs> another episode of the Fat Cats Rugby Podcast. Uh, uh, back to where it all began. Another episode, another day. Ruben, how are you doing? Very, very well. Uh, of course, it's always it's always an exciting experience when we get to talk to different people in the rugby circles from different camps about different experiences. I'm eager to know about their experience from Toro. I'm bummed that we had to miss Toro. Mm. Um, I think we need to be more serious, especially with the upcoming circuits and perhaps even plan better for next year. It seems that the parties at those upcountry circuits, we are paying attention to the wrong things. So you're saying salary should come early? Yes. Uh, <laughs> whoever is paying us, please, please, yeah. please find attached. Yeah, you know, when uh, I saw a tweet from mm-hmm. someone uh, where they were saying, when a ram eats a cob, uh, rugby sevens is very unpredictable. So he said, okay. Let them come here and uh, brag about how they eat a cob day in, day out. Maybe for those who are just watching this for the first time, um, we have the now Special Sevens that is ongoing. Uh, recent circuit was in Toro, uh, Fort Porto, or as other people say, Fort Porto. Uh, and uh, one of the key fixtures involving uh, the champions of the day, that was Cobbs took on Rams and Rams uh, did the job and they managed to beat up on uh, Cobbs, uh, that result ending 7-5. And uh, it's on that basis that we're going to have our two guests here from Rams. They call themselves the Ugandan Rugby Academy. Uh, so maybe from my left and on my right, let me have the gentleman on my left. Uh, introduce himself to our viewers and tell us maybe a thing or two about himself. Then we go to the lady on my right. Thank you, Edwin. I'm Jude Rakayanga. I'm a dentist by profession. I've been a rugby player over 17 seasons. And uh, I'm a coach. I'm a specialist coach, SNC and Sevens coach. No, oh, thank you. Nice to have you here. The and, lady uh, on my right. Time, yes. I'm also the general secretary for Rams. Oh, okay, perfect. Lady on my right. I know usually you say ladies first, but uh, since you're the one who brought the tweet, for you. since you brought the tweet out, I said you should be the last to speak on this one. So, lady on my right. Thank you so much, Edwin. Nanyonyi uh, Immaculate. I use Zimbabwe. It's my name from home. Photo. Um. I did education, literature and English from Macquarie University. I'm a sportswoman. I've done several sports at the university. I've traveled. So I think I ended up being in rugby and I am now concentrating on rugby. Yeah, before the injury as an active player, so now I'm in management. I'm the TM for you. Okay. So, and actually, I'm working somewhere else. I'm not teaching. Okay, perfect. Nice uh, introductions there. So, we have uh, a person from the youth that is uh, Immaculate. And then we have from the Rams, uh, Jude. Jude has been uh, a fixture in Ugandan rugby for quite some time. So, maybe as we go ahead, we'll get to hear his story as well as Immaculate telling us about that injury. Maybe Immaculate, just to come to you. Uh, you are very happy in Toro. Tell us what excited you about that game that you had to tweet and smile for everyone in the video. Uh, actually, uh, Toro Sevens was one of a kind. It was a circuit that we really enjoyed. First of all, I traveled as a fan. I didn't go in any management of rams. I went as a fan because I thought if I'm in management, I will not enjoy and I'm going to see my people at home. So uh, we watched the games the first day and it was so interesting that these teams you don't expect came up and had to outwin these bigger teams we usually see. So when Rams got on our call, we are so excited actually, not, not only me, but also 
other people. We are so excited. We are here for good rugby. We are not having anything like I hate cobs, I hate events, but we are here for good rugby. So if Warriors came out and and do a good thing or play well, so we shall cheer up. No, there's one thing I've, no, I've noticed about Cobs in these sevens. Yeah. They have one loss every circuit. Yeah. Eh? So it's important to know when that loss is coming. Mm. And uh, maybe it was also a blessing in this guys for them for, for, to get that loss on day one yeah. in the group. So that means now they had to focus through the whole of day two and just get the win. Yeah, for us, in, who, who, who stuck around uh, in Kampala, I mean, watching it on the stream, watching the guys on their Nile special... And then all of a sudden, you start seeing these shock results coming in, trickling. Day one, shock result. Day two, some shock results. Day one, notably, Edens were knocked out in the <laughs> in the group stages. And and as, as Immaculate said, not that we hate Edens or we like to see them suffer, but I mean, it gathered uh, a few laughs. I was uh, in a place in the evening and I was told to go back home and sleep early so that I could wake up before 8 and sing <laughs> Seven. so I really got offended 7 a.m. challenge Seven a. M. <laughs> that I used to waking up at 8 and they play at 10 had to deal with that kind of uh, affair of playing the first game of day 2 but it goes to show the level of competition that was in Toro uh, courtesy of uh, the guys at the Uganda Rugby Union and Nile Special Flexi Pay that uh, have helped uh, activate many, many, many products at uh, these particular circuits. This week there's a break, uh, so it's a bye weekend. I don't know, Jude, what is the... Does it mean Rams will sit back and not do s &C this week? We are in full form. Okay. Actually, it's, it has given us more training time. Yes. Yeah, because the week that we play, uh, we have uh, less sessions. Yeah, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, because we need to give that room for people to recover. If someone who's going to play for two days, uh, they need enough recovery. More so even when they are going to travel, you know, see most travels, 40s, over almost 290 kilometers, uh, to and back. So this week, at least we have enough time to prepare to go on top of that group. Yeah, uh, you know, Ruben, uh, Cobbs, after that uh, display in the quarterfinals against Pirates, mm. where uh, uh, a lot of banter was uh, gotten out of a few pictures. I saw you <laughs> uh, using your thumbs on the TL and showing that you also have jokes, you're a funny guy. What was the impact of that game, um, particularly for Cobbs? going through and beating uh, Pirates, who they had earlier beaten in the game at, uh, at the Rujumba Sevens, the semi-final? Yeah, ideally, um, Pirates, of course, being the team that had so far won two, um, two circuits, they become automatically the target. Everyone is eyeing to be like, you know what, we need to beat those guys. And it, um, for a team that had a shaky day one, Cobbs um, losing to Rams, you need something that's going to give you the motivation. And I think the turning point for them was really in that game getting everything right. I mean, we had this conversation with Dexter building up from in the Rujumba 7 going into Toro that even that time, um, for some reason, Cobbs was playing more of the structured rugby while Pirates was relying a lot on the individual brilliance. And it was in this particular game as well where we would see similar patterns. But now the difference was that this time that uh, you're having them match out the Pirates one-on-one. -on -one. So they are, they are equaling the individual brilliance. So what, when it goes down to structure, what happens? And of course, with the banter online, you know, one thing about rugby that I've come to learn in all this time that I've been there is that, man, everything comes full circle. Everyone has a day when they get their share. So mm. uh, <laughs> uh, uh, our dear friend from the other camp yeah. uh, in Boyo Giridi, yes. how did he say? And uh, there were a lot of people backing him. Hey, yes. what? But what if it's a fact? But now we could also see from the photos when the... You see, they, they say when it's not funny when the rabbit turns the gun towards yeah. you as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that picture is not funny at all. But uh, as we say, uh, today is about Rams and we're going to focus on their growth. Maybe just one thing before we get into the, the Rams story, the Rams story of the academy. 
how you have built Ugandan rugby and how the youth have also come up and uh, been uh, a force in women's rugby as well. Jude, as uh, SNC, tell us what was through your players' minds when you were playing that fixture against Cobbs. How did you manage to stick to your game plan and eventually win? Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, as SNC, we prepare these players for the time that they will last on pitch and how much they can give in level performance. Eh? Uh, we have built since pre-season, I think we went to Toro when it was our week eight, week eight of our, our training and our players had got more confident. Uh, the gym sessions I told them they are strong physically, they have been running, the endurance has been picked. So, and I, I told them, just go and do your best because we have gone through everything. Uh, don't try to do a lot of things, work as a team, work as a unit, and the results will be visible. And uh, they stick to the plan. Yeah, um, it was quite evident the end of uh, that particular fixture, Ram 7, uh, Cobbs 5. Now we go into uh, the story of the use. Very interesting name, the use there. The use, yeah, we have we seen use. many people yeah. have different pronunciations of yes. the use. So uh, that's <laughs> why we have uh, Lady Macklet from Fort Porto here to tell us. Tell us, um, we want to know this this particular club, we, we see them uh, in the the ladies league that is 15s we have seen them in the central sevens but we don't know where they come from we don't know their story we don't know what they're about and i'm told you are the team manager so you have all the records you have all the information give us that story thank you the youth actually they are three years old they started in 2010 but with tag rugby so they had to seize and you know uh, from that time we came to lockdown that's when after lockdown that's when we had to resume work at us that's when uh, jude and the rams uh, management had to come up and build the team afresh so i came in as a player from the university after i had graduated i graduated in 20 21. So during that period of lockdown, I was staying there inside the university. So I looked for any sport that was active. Rugby was active. I used to go do touch with the, the guys around. Uh, so in touch, that's where I, as, as I got interest. I started looking for a ladies team around and I got to do it. So when we started, I think we played uh, some tournaments, friends, friendlies with Black Pulse. So I think that's where Coach Leo spotted me. Uh, Coach Leo had called me for the National 15th. So from there, Black Pulse came to Makere. So when they came to Makere, we played, and unfortunately, I got an injury. I broke two bones of my ankle. So from there, I think up to now I've never gone to play rugby. So I was like, uh, since I'm an active sportswoman, I'll not sit down. So I continued with management. But the university is, is doing different sports. Uh, so since I had graduated, I needed to be in a club because I'm still in the handball club but I got interest in rugby. Uh, yeah, the university had no rugby team for ladies. <coughs> so when I got the US, I had to, to get my friends from basketball, handball. Actually, we have uh, Immaculate Nzima, who is on the 15th team. She came to US because of me. Mm. We had a very interesting team before my injury, I brought very many girls from the university, Udaya, Nalubega, who played on 
the sevens team, but now she's busy with work. Uh, Sherina, very many basketballers who joined rugby. Because I think that time, 2021, December, before December, we had Kings of Rugby, Paso. We hosted at Makere, and that team that played, we all stayed in Ewes. So when I got the injury, and Shereen also got an injury, but hers was not severe like mine, most girls ran away because of my injury. It was so terrible. So when they went, I stayed around. Uh, we had to continue playing up to now. Now the team is playing the Central Sevens. We hope for better because now it's so far three years. And uh, we have uh, the academy. We have some girls from Macquarie Yellow. It's called Macquarie Primary, uh, Macquarie University Primary School. It is called Yellow. We have some girls there. We have some other community schools there where we're going. We have girls, we are training them. Yes, uh, uh, it's good that Coach Jude is also here. He'll add up uh, because he's now the coach for the ladies. What I am promising is we are doing better and we are still continuing to do better. So um, we have, you know, it was, it's a combination of the university ladies and community. Some community girls that started in Iwi, some of them Thunderbirds actually has taken one, two of our girls. Which girls are those? Comfort Angaika. Uh -huh. Nina Sharon. I think there's another girl, but she was initially for Chadondo. She had picked interest in Iwi. She played for us, but later went. So we count two girls. Mm. So besides that, we shall continue doing well as a team. Yeah, those things are there in rugby. But actually, we need the union to intervene because we cannot be getting our girls, our players, and people because we, we have the best fund for foundation. We just come out of the blue and take our, our players. For greener pastures. Isn't yes. there any paperwork that these, these girls have to sign uh, as players of use? Yeah, we have actually signed. So you know, when, when like Thunderbirds takes one, is that a breach of contract or any other club? We had not yet, but I think the union is, is on it because we wrote, we complained. Coach Jude were together when we were complaining and we wrote because Thunderbirds has to pay. For Angaika Comfort, they will not take her. Yes, mm. she's there, but they will not take her. She's one of the girls that Coach Jude started with when I had also not yet gone to use. So, and uh, we are going to have some tournaments at the university. Kings of Rugby is coming, the FASU Games is coming uh, in October. So I hope to get more girls from the university. When we train, I think uh, I want to rebuild the other team that I was with when I joined EWS. So when they come after the university games, because even in, in December, we are hosting the AUS, Association of Uganda University Sports at Makere. Yes. So rugby will be part. And I hope the ladies will participate. So yes. from there, actually, we even have France next year for the university. So all those tournaments, uh, since we don't have the ladies team at, at the university, you is, is there. So when they come, we shall train them and maintain them. Maybe on just a bit of a personal note there. I wanted to, uh, I think these are, the one thing that has really intrigued me is the fact that you've talked about having played a number of sports. Um, what do you think about you gives you that that ability to be able to switch from one sport to the other and then maybe comfortably play this one and then go to the next with so much comfort? You know, you've talked about handball, yeah. then moving to rugby, two different kinds of sports, although they both use hands on the ball. And also maybe uh, while you're at that, you did, you've really mentioned a lot about your your injury. I think I, I did see you on, on clutches sometimes in, in, sometime in Makere. I know the challenge of, 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 of breaking a leg, but when you talked about two bones, that sounds crazy. So um, 
your return is it that uh, medically i don't yet given you a thumbs up have you just mentally say that i'm not going back to experience something similar do you not feel like you're ready what why why do you think you can't go back uh, i don't feel that i can't go back because i'm a real sports woman okay. i can go back but because of work my work commitments and now the route that i've taken management mm. so i really want to concentrate on that and i can really motivate you know when you motivate you when you motivate people there is something that they see on you and say yes you can you can you can actually follow her uh, i've been an active sportswoman since high school so when i joined my career i became a sports minister i did several sports netball handball uh, basketball for rugby it wasn't there so from there uh, why why i'm saying that i did uh, several sports and I got interest in rugby. It's because when you are a real sportswoman, there is no game that you can't play. Maybe if you're not a sportswoman. But for me, I used to do each and every sport. <clears throat> and I was so comfortable. And I really enjoy it. So if you're a sportswoman, you can do everything. You can do each and every game. So for those who saw me play rugby up to now, they say, we really lost you. Which Maybe position did you used to play? Fifteens, I used to to, to do. Uh, I used to be at the park. Yeah. Yes, for sevens, actually, we we had not yet started sevens very very well, but we we had the kings of rugby sevens, Africa sevens. I also played. So I didn't I didn't play rugby so much, but. Since I had the, the touch, the touch games I used to do at Makere touch with the men, I picked up quickly. And Coach Jude, when he came to train us, I had already picked the sport. Because I used to see it at, at the university, but nowhere to play it from. Coach Jude, your name has been mentioned as a guy who motivated uh, Immaculate to start this rugby career of hers, though cut short by injury. Mm. As a coach, how do you identify this talent and uh, say that now this is the lady who should play for us? Uh, as a coach, one, you look at uh, uh, someone who has interest in playing, someone who enjoys what they are doing. That's where we start from. Yeah. Yeah, because if uh, you find a player, a, a girl or boy who really enjoys playing, the next thing we do is to direct them how to play yeah. and how to play better, enjoy, and also be efficient to improve yourself. Yeah, so I, as she said, uh, when uh, they were hosting uh, Russell Games 2021, yeah. Uh, Madam Penina contacted me and said, I would like to have a ladies' team. Uh, by then, we were in the building phase of EOS because we had had our academy. Our academy actually started in 2010. That's when we started to train from Makerere, from Lago. We never used to have a rugby ground. All the days we would play with those, the shield mm. nationwide. We just had like a small compound, more like this. Yes. Yeah, that's where I would prepare from and then come come and compete with the guys. But uh, uh, during the time when Obote was chairman yes. of the EPS, yeah, he allowed us to start to train from Makere. So you started effectively in 2010? In 2010. So when we started <laughs> like now, we have to bring on board the young ones so that we beef up the team because we always have a challenge. A person, you know, there's just become a senior player, it's just that year is finishing campus, it's finishing a medical school, it's finishing paramedical, we won't have a chance to see them again. So like, no, we need to build players who can stay longer. So we started with both boys and girls. Uh, the first lot of the players we had in our academy, yes. uh, those were the likes of Danny Katerega, is now at Buffalo's. Uh, Danny Sean Katerega, Brothers, wow, okay. The same. Uh, Danny Chisache, Chisache Amkama is in Kenya. 
Mm. And, uh, yeah. So that was the first road. I think uh, from that road we have uh, Brian Wandela. They were all young boys. All young boys, yeah. Time. And uh, we had girls as well, but uh, the biggest challenge was maintaining a girls' team. I uh, won that when these boys would finish tag, we didn't have a transition because we didn't have a ladies' team. So some girls would fall off. Uh, we reached a time where, like, no, we now have a good number of girls. We need to create them. Um, the next stage for them, the next stage, and that's how we came up with the female team. Previously, we had Eels as our fans. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had Eels as our fans because we were from Lago. We had the boys who were the Rams, mm. the ladies were the Eels. Okay. Yeah, so like now, let's build it more from fans. Yeah. Uh, to a real team, and uh, as you say, with me when we started the COVID, the lockdowns came in. Mm. Yeah, so we had to store for a year. So when Madame Penas told me I, I want to have a, a ladies team compete mm. at the Africa University Games, I was like, yeah, it's the right timing. Because I told her we're already building uh, a ladies team here, and I saw it as an opportunity to add on the university uh, ladies. So who, who can play rugby as who well? Who can play rugby? She oh, has okay. already been a regular in the Friday touch, Friday touch, yeah, yeah, and then uh, Sunday touch, uh, yeah. So they gathered different girls from different disciplines: athletics, football, basketball, handball, uh, and uh, I think we had to be there for like three weeks and before the tournament. Yeah, it was tough. And that's how the ladies started. Yeah, uh, that's how it that's started. Uh, it revitalized club. Yeah, Ruben, uh, I should say that they managed to convert uh, lady fans. Who are called they used to become players. I don't know if Kings Park can do the same. <laughs> if they can change, if they can change from from giving Negroes to to seeing some of them lifted in the line out, some of them scrummaging. What do you think about that? Is that possible? Musa always says that we need to have these Chadondo guys who go to have fun converted to to rugby fans and players. What do you think? First of all, it takes heart and initiative from the person themselves. I mean. Uh, uh, someone can do all they can to convert you, but if you yourself within your heart, you're not there yet, nothing can be done to change. But uh, it's great to see what they have done um, so far. Um, I, I'd like to say Rams has a, a lot of, of players. It has really developed. Mm. Even those that have just, uh, have, well, let's say, were somewhere else and have gone to the club and then eventually leave, you see there's a bit of a difference there. They really, really um, do a lot, and especially now with Makere College, um, the work that even comes from that partnership between um, Rams and Makere College is also something that is valuable to uh, development of uh, the uh, talent in the next generation. I think it's a, it's a really, really good thing that uh, we need to find a lot more of those templates uh, put into different um, locations, and also other, other clubs really should pick up on it and also say, we are not just thinking about the now. How about the future? Mm. What are we doing in the future? How can we impact the future? That's something very important. Maybe before Jude now tells us why. At a time, we always knew that Rams was only a team of pharmacists. And I was like, are these all pharmacists and whatever? We at the Fred and Wendy B&B, um, our usual home where we usually shoot the podcasts. Um, <clears throat> then our self-contained rooms. Uh with uh, two kitchens and a chef to cater for your every need. Um, the chef will cook any meal that you desire at the time when you come and have your stay at the Fred and Winnie B&B. Uh, there's always that uh, tropical breakfast with a select portion of fruits that you may have as and when you have and enjoy your stay here at the Fred and Winnie B&B. Uh, a pickup from the airport and transport around Kampala can always be organized. So do give us a shout out and uh, check uh, the details. The contact will be at the bottom and have a look at uh, the offers that will be available for you. And do say that uh, Pat Cat sent you. Jude, um, there was a time you were called MRI Rams, Mulago Rams. What is the history of Rams? When did you guys start this thing called Rams? Who started it? Who are the pioneers? The Pioneers Rams yes. was started by students of then Mulago Paramedical Training Schools. 
That was way in 1999. Okay. And they okay. started to play competitions officially in 2000. 2000, okay. Yeah, that's when they became a member of Uganda Rugby Union. All right. Uh, the pioneer chairman was uh, Eddie McGuire. Okay. Yeah, I think he's now living in Australia. Mm. Uh, they were the group of uh, Mulondo Peter. He's around, he's a pharmacist, worked with PCCA. Uh, as you see, the, the core. The core there is also Mowa, works with the UPDF uh, Air Force, is a medic. Yes. Well. So the core of Rams is Molago. Mm. That's why you find many of us are medics in the team. Yeah, so it gave rise to many rugby players have passed through Rams, including like, some senior players like Victor Wadia. Victor was Wadia was in Rams? Yes. When yeah. was that? The days before us. Oh, the days yeah. before. Yeah, because personally, I joined Rams in 2006. Okay. Yeah, that's when I, I was at dental school. Okay. That's when I joined Rams and uh, started to play uh, in the league. And uh, we used to play, it, it was for vibes. Mm. We have fun. Rugby in Morocco was the weekend pro. Okay. As you're sure, over the weekend, you will go Chadundo, Travel to Jinja, mm. play Nile, mm. go to Intimate, play Mongas. Mm. And uh, so when time passed by, the team grew in numbers. And uh, we saw that we could really challenge. And uh, that's when we started to, to think uh, beyond just having a weekend call. And uh, we chose to make it a full fledged club. And in 2012, we registered our constitution and we started a new journey. Yeah, because one of the challenges we had that being an institution affiliated team, when it was holidays, uh, you couldn't gather players. Yeah. You couldn't get facilitation to cover for matches. So one was to be operating throughout. And we said, yes, we are from Lago, but we are going to affiliate the community around us and uh, that's why we opened up uh, started inviting the young boys from Makere, Mulago, Sheba and Wampa would come from nearby because the likes of Nelson Mandela mm. from Nankulavi areas and uh, then we also looked into the school activities where we brought on board Makere College yeah I remember the likes of Desire here when they were still playing in the Makere under 17 team. Mm. Yeah, and they, they rose and uh, even started to play the, the likes of Chiseka, mm. the ref. Mm. Yeah, those were yes. our, the, the first players I think we worked with at Makere College. Uh, by then, Chiseka, the Aidas were the years below them. And we have treated other schools like Green Hill, um, Mango SS. And uh, the time came, well, now we had to zero we are the, the schools that were more supportive the schools each other administration that were more supportive yeah but continue with our community academy yeah because we knew that this is what will keep us going whether the schools are in holiday, Malabu is in holiday, Malabu is in holiday or one player is now finishing university is starting to work to have a, a steady replacement for them and in 2016, Rams qualified to the Premiership. Okay. From the, I think we were the last uh, group to play the nationwide challenge before mm. they came with, yeah. with the regions. And we qualified after summer camp, had qualified and transitioned to Warriors. Yeah. Uh, we, actually, that was the year the league was expanded from eight teams to ten. To ten. to 10, yeah. Yeah, because we qualified with the Guru, who had been the champions of the Shield. And even before that, uh, Rams, our strength, I think you could say that was in sevens. In 2013, we were overall number three. Okay, okay. Yeah, we okay. steep competition from Buffaloes. I think that's the season Buffaloes won. And they were second. Mm, yeah. Kevens won. Kevens. Oh, yeah. won, okay. Because mm. here they had a very little team. 
Yeah. They also be sure they don't cheese down. Yeah. Michael, they are young. It's empty in heavens. Yeah, yeah, they want that never the is the joke. Yeah, <laughs> the team was, yeah. was. I think it was. By then it was only heavens and and uh, cobs which were hard teams for us to crack. But the rest in sevens would would take on any team and win with good squads. Yeah, so Rams has evolved since then. Uh, from there to expand to form a second team mm. because the academy grew numbers that we feed the senior team and we have reserves. That's when we started the second team. And uh, we have not stopped at that. We are still into rugby development. And yes, we've had shops here and there. And actually, they have uh, made us to strategize better. Where we are now, and uh, I will assure you that in the next three years, Rams will be competing for the title. Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, the one thing I want to know about Rams, you know, everyone usually, if you're not really close to Makere, you just know Rams as as the team that is uh, best in Makere, or of the banter that you guys have with your with your neighbors, impis about landlord and <laughs> and Tell everything. Yeah. But I want to know, if someone came and wanted to ask you really, what's Rams all about? How is the culture in Rams? Um, how do you guys uh, um, bond off the pitch? Tell us a little bit about Rams as a as, lifestyle. As a lifestyle, okay. Rams, uh, the culture is about giving opportunities. And sharing opportunities through mm. rugby. We are a family in Rams. We are in for each other. We welcome anyone and we share with them the opportunities that we have. And that's what has kept us together for a long time. Because when you look at Rams, I think that if you've been around, there are faces you've seen consistently, whether on or off pitch, together. Rouse, thick and thin. And this culture was personally found it there because uh, I was recruited by the late Patrick Akaire. Yeah, he was a, a great man who used to gather us all and uh, he taught us how to share, how to live for each other, how to be in for each other, not just at school or on beach, but even outside. Yeah, so we grew with. We grew with this culture, shared it even with the next generation, so that they know that at Rams we are one. We are always there for each other, whichever capacity we can. Okay. Mm -hmm. my, you know, my first game I ever played for boot camp was against Rams. <laughs> How did that turn out? <laughs> and that's been one of the things. They say Rams like milking, Rams like doing these things. Jude. Are these things true? Because for me, I also have my complaints. Red paper. Eh? Yeah. You say that you guys, the <laughs> rums operates, then, then you get to know. So, what's that culture? I, I We have seen very many people come out and complain about you guys. Uh, honestly, there's no there's yeah. no that they play culture. Yeah. Actually, Rams has uh, a good number of professional coaches. Yes. Uh, but you know, in a game, at times it comes to that contest between individuals. Yes. Yeah, those one-on-one -on -one contests, starting maybe from scrum down, the breakdowns. Yes. Yeah, so certain, certain times, uh, some things go out of way, but it's not what yeah. we coach. Yes. Because we coach rugby, uh -huh. and uh, we uphold we upload all values of rugby. Okay. Yeah. So some of the things, they just happen maybe on individual basis. You mm. see them happen in all games everywhere. Sometimes there's that... Fierce contest between certain players, but it's not very mm. really coached at the team. Actually, we really coach good structured rugby at Rams. My apology accepted on my end. <laughs> uh, maybe if I just uh, disturb Immaculate a little bit here. Uh, Immaculate, you guys have been uh, participating in the Central Sevens. And uh, I think you have had your fair battles with this Lady Swans. And uh, I think the Lady Pacers, how have those battles been? I think you played two circuits. You played at Graveyard, and then you also okay. played at uh, Moobs. Yes. Graveyard Oh, and Omar Carey, the other one that was supposed to be in NTV. Yes. How has that circuit been, and how has it helped you guys prepare for your tournament? I think you said you have a tournament in uh, later on this year. Yes. Yes. Uh, 
That's why the girls are really improving. We were the third, I think, on the table. We appeared the third. Uh, the moves, the moves uh, circuit went on well. Actually, I think what we need to improve with our girls is uh, when we reach semi-final there, is where things don't go on well. But we start well. We started the circuit very well. And the girls are happy because they've also added on their skills for rugby. And after the, the Central Sevens, we have not sat. They are there on pitch actually today. Coach, Coach Jude delegated another coach to train the ladies. They are there training. Yeah, they are not seated at home because we have a lot to do. I think there is another tournament that we are rooting for after the Africa Rugby Sevens, the Chigezi. I think Coach Jude, I don't know if you have it in your plans, you talk about mm, it. Yeah. But the ladies are also going. Okay. So we are not seated. Lady Swans came in and uh, Lady Pacers. Yeah, Lady Pacers is a good team because they are the winners of the, of the tournament. And we hope for better next time. Maybe I don't know if you, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you go around uh, your recruitment. You mentioned uh, Makere Yellow, that you have an association with them, and you have some young players who you are training. I don't know if you go around Africa, uh, Mary Stewart uh, Complex, Akamwesi, Nana, to get PMC, to get some girls to come and uh, play for you. How is your recruitment done at, 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 at your club? Yeah, for example, you see, for any... Uh, I will start with these ladies that are hard yeah. to get and keeping them in any sport unless someone is willing. For example, for us who are willing to be in sports, Coach Jude would not plead for us. Mm. Uh, so I first of all, me as from Mary Stewart, I had three Mary Stewart girls, Sherina, Winnie, and... Uh, they left, they are doing basketball. So Africa, I also have some ladies. The freshers are coming in this August. They are coming in. And when freshers come at Makere, they get orientation. Those ones uh, who do sports, who are doing sports from high school, they get to know them. Good thing I'm in touch with the Games Union, Madame Penina and Mr. Brian. I'm in touch with them. So if the freshers come in, and besides the usual schedules for games at the university, we again have the October tournament where we we'll need Madame Penina. We orient the girls, those ones who will come in and join the youth so that we get prepared. So I hope to get the girls. Yes, university is there community and the primary schools that are around Macquarie University. Now, I think you, Ruben, she earlier mentioned um, the problem that they have been having is that they lose talent as well. Most of these clubs come and poach uh, their players. I don't know what they... You mean, there's a, there's a laid out policy, I believe, in respect to transfers on how people can leave, but uh, I, I, I do assume it applies for the women's game as well. I don't know, maybe you had earlier mentioned that Thunderbirds, you and Thunderbirds had been in a, in a spot for, I think, Anena? No, yes. Comfort and Deca. Comfort and Deca and who? Uh, Anena Sharon. Yes. And I think they, there is another one who was called Jovia Nyamungu. Mm. But for Anena and Nyamungu, those, I think, they started because I found them at news. Yes. But what I know, they were part of Chadondo. Yes. So they came to Makere to be in was willingly. So I think they later had to go back to their home. Yeah. They went. Those ones we didn't. But <laughs> You're not letting her go. But we are not leaving. You her. seem very she's... determined on that one. Yes. <laughs> so which position does she's... she play? She's half back. 
the half back, eh? back. Okay, hey, man. Everyone needs a good half back. Hey, yeah, yeah, so if she can <laughs> do the Rams, PDs, why why should she be taken? Oh, she's really a good player that yes. Coach Jude has modeled. That's right, now she's with the national team. She's this. Okay, and the so that, that's for sevens? Yes. Okay. The national call-up was from you is not under. Oh, okay. Yes. So she's still a player. It's, still your player. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a bit of a challenge that I think um, I have noticed, even in the men's uh, setup. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't like to call them the smaller sides, but not the usual big three mm. in the men. That we do have those laws that are that are supposed to give guide the process on how a, a player is supposed to be transferred. But somehow, I don't think the enforcement or the impl- implementation is is strictly adhered to, mm. and um, the teams with the influence always find a way of, of of manipulating it. And if you do not, as a team, also de- decide to be very determined in how to to counter that, you can easily lose your player. So it's something that cuts across, and uh, I think the union needs to really sit down and first of all find um, stringent punishments for these things once they actually find that. The team team X is guilty of, of, of something like that, but also that what are the processes before you, teams feed in their team list? What kind of database does the union have? Mm. Does it cross check with uh, any of the the things that are, are being uh, talked about? Do they have the right documentation from both sides? Are both teams in a, in agreement? In agreement, yeah. Also, I don't know. Also, to what extent does a player also have say in, this in their transfer? Yeah. So there's a lot that needs actually, to be. Actually, for the men, yeah. it has been streamlined. Okay. Already. Mm. And uh, because I think it started uh, being strictly implemented, especially in the Premiership, like uh, three seasons ago. There's a well laid down uh, transfer procedure for a player to move. From team A to team B, one, uh, team B will ask for team A to release a player. Mm. That is one. Or two, the player can ask their teams, the mother team, to be released to the team they are going to. Uh, so this is the these are the laid down procedures. One, either a player is a contact third player. So he's an uncontracted player. So if he's a contracted player, of course, the contract is signed, come into play. If they're an uncontracted player, they look at the age, the government age. If a player is from 17 years to 23 years, one, the team he has been playing for has to release him to the other team, but there is a fee, a development fee. It's determined, there's a, a calculation, it's already determined by union, which the other team has to pay mm. for that release to be action. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, so, for some of these players who cross within that range, that fee is agreeable. The, the team makes payment for that player. And the if a player is above 23 years, they are entitled to be released. Above 23 years without contract, once you want to move on, you have to release them. How about with contract? Is there any compensation? If yes, of course, if it's contract, then it's the terms of the contract that should come into play. Okay. Yeah, so I realize that it runs uh, Somehow, somehow, we picked out of interest in this because we, at a certain time, we were caught off guard. But it, by the way, it has not started with the current generation. Yeah. Any, I think it was around uh, 2012 or 2011. Mm. Emma Chibi Julius Tumwesi J, and then it's Rahel moved to Cobbs. Mm. Yes, they moved to Cobbs. Okay. By then, we didn't have these procedures. Yeah. Know, Impressed, and uh, so I think that was the start of because we, we started to see losing players, losing players. So we pushed, of course, the union through the way through their books and what they put down this procedure, which is operating right now. Yeah, but as a club, uh, since even one of those actually why we lost some players last season, 
is because as a club we have keep as we keep growing, we keep looking at how we make rounds a better place. Yeah. Yeah. To compete and for players around. So we came up with a long term athletic development program for our players. Uh, where we a resolution was made by the Rams XCOM that each player must have a minimum of five year contract. Okay. Yeah. And uh, some players didn't take it light because some come want to have they show they shine and they have their destination they want to. Yeah, they want to go to another yeah, club. But we're like uh, this is a, a club that is working with uh, minimal resources, so we have to put those resources we have to maximum use. So we gave them a leeway. They either with the program or we can excuse and save friends. Which players particularly were these who you had to let go of. Yeah, we had to let go of uh, yeah. Manuel Kinyera, Arnold Musazi. Okay. Yeah, because those are players who are above development. Yes. They are no longer development players and they are not on contract. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, they were not comfortable with the contract. Yes. Including some who are on contract, who are in the development age, uh, but also not contracted. Like so, uh, Ryan Mwandegu, okay. uh, the Christopher Kato, mm. Luis Oboy. So we had Ruiz to, boy who is in Rhinos. Yeah, who is in Rhinos. So we yes. had to really create a system. Like what I told Ruben that in the next three years we should be able to challenge for the, well, the title, yes. Yeah, for the title. I'm certain because now we have a system in play. Yeah, because you know that to get the best you've seen all these players develop. Especially I'll take the top of of Uganda players. Yeah. Yeah, the likes of Phil, Aaron. Yes. Uh including even Casito, we've mm. seen why it has taken them to be at the level at, at that peak. they are right yeah. now, even the likes of Kisiga. Mm. You cannot get a player from the low point to the high point in one year. Yes. Yeah. So you need a player to have been on a consistent program yeah, for at least two years, and the third year you're getting to their peak where you can challenge. And then you can have the fruit for the next two years. And the player can think of either extending or leaving. So you have to put in the best out of the player. Because uh, also, you want to keep producing players for Uganda. Yeah, the first time Uganda won the African Rugby Sevens, mm. Rams had a player on that team, Robert Anguzu. And yeah, I think I remember him. The guy who used to have. Is it a mohawk or something yeah. like that? Yeah, actually, he's, hey. he's making a return soon. Where has he been? Work issues. He was doing uh, veterinary medicine, so he got into his final year. You know, oh, okay, that, yeah. Get into work and settle. Okay, so makes sense, yeah. So he, like, really takes time for someone to settle in and say, he says, I still want to, to play. To but you see, that I understand the essence of work, yeah. but work has robbed us of so many. Brilliant years of many players. Actually, across Uganda rugby, when yes, you look at our with, retirement starting age, with immaculate here. Mm. Yeah. Hey. When you look at our retirement age, mm. we never have players. We look at it. I think the average age is below thirty years. Mm. Yes, yes, yeah, below thirty. And if you're going to to compete at world stage, mm. yeah, it's like institutions really need that experience. Mm. That's why some they say you cannot send a, a boy to be a man's job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really that, that is true. Yeah, so, it has been a, a challenge. But then, how 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 do we, how does rugby or how does sport in Uganda yeah. put itself in a position where we don't lose those players? Is there anything we can do financially to compensate what yeah. what reward. what their workplaces would do? I think uh, one is rewards. Uh, when you look at also that ages, what does the game put on the table? Mm. Yeah, and I think we can uh, uh, see what is happening. We will take an example of the national sevens team. Mm. I think it's, it's, it's the only national rugby team with contracted player. Yeah. And after, I think that's one of the reasons you see that a group of players have been able to play longer at that team than before. Uh, you will see previously we would lose players due to when we travel to play. Yeah. The likes of uh, 
Pario. Yeah, Pario, uh, yes. Bijik. Uh, actually, I think Bijik didn't go in such a way. Mm. Yeah, but there are those people who just disappear, Ramadan. Mm. Because they are worried, they are not sure what rugby will provide for them the next day. Yes. Yeah. So, we hope this will move down to even clubs. You see that whatever small thing is there is defined and the player is assured of getting something. That's where we shall start. Maybe immaculate. Yeah. Which uh which players in news are are bubbling bubbling that we should be ready to look out for in the next next two to three years that when we watch this podcast three years from now, mm. we'll say immaculate picked out these players and who in the in your team is uh, really those promising players well I know you already mentioned you said Immaculate is on the national team yes. uh, and uh, maybe give us some more players who believe uh, soon to be uh, senior players in the national team and also grow your club as well I have Nakato Agatha who's okay. already a call up on the national team sevens sevens okay yes um Another one is Angaika, the one we are talking about. Yes. She's just gotten done with her form six. Um, there is uh, Nantongo Fiona. There is uh, Christiana Chiravo. Um, I have several players. Mm. And others are coming in. So the 23 years, these ones are coming in. We have picked up. Yeah, and the young ones. So if you're in Africa, uh, CCE, Mary Stewart, and you're going to watch this, please send your girls to the use and be able to get some uh, numbers there for these ladies so they can play rugby ardently as well. Maybe Jude, back to you. Uh, you mentioned very many players that you have grown, but I'm sure the list has not been exhausted. Uh, is there? A, can you point to every club and say there's a Rams guy who had the foundation there? Uh, for now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll just point a few. Yes, uh, Pires is there. Yes, is there. Yes. Yeah, is there. And I think uh, apart from the injury sustained, we wish him the biggest recovery. Yeah. I think he has done a good job in the Ghana rugby. Yeah. Not just for Pires. Yeah. Yeah. Look at uh, his end. Uh, Trevor Chan. Trevor Chan was at. Uh, oh, Trevor Road. Chan, okay. Oh, yeah, I, I think I do remember. But yeah. we picked him from the academy and made him the player that mm. we desired to have back. If you remember that, uh, the last floodlights national circuit we had at Chadongo. Yes. Yeah, where Rams were finalists. We yeah. We defeated uh, Buffaloes in the semi finals. Yes. I, actually, I remember. I gave him the look that nailed the final coffee in the, in the, uh, the final nail in the, the Buffalo's coffee. Yes. Yeah, and then from there he moved back to Academy. Okay. Yeah, so Trevor Chan and uh, yeah, we see, you can see his Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a farm player. He's a farm player. Yeah. Uh, right now we look at Buffalo's. Uh, Sean and uh, Dan Katerega is the captain for Buffalo's. Mm. I think that's the uh, my, I told you that was my first group. Your first group of players. Yeah, players, yeah. The boys are raised from here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm always happy to see them performing on that pitch. Okay. And they have not reached their full potential, but I'm also pleased to see them rise up there. Uh, I know Sebuliba. <laughs> oh, Sebuliba was in Rams as well? <laughs> you ask him, he knows. I think uh, we, wow. gave, we gave Sebuliba the courage to play club rugby. He was okay. not in rounds, but we always pick him from Chambogo. Oh, okay. He was oh, still Chambogo, yes. at Chambogo College. Yeah. We always pick him from Chambogo College, give him the, the game time, and then he got his confidence. Ah, this thing was like, uh, come You come, come, come. come yeah. Is there something college. about Chadondo players that maybe sometimes it, it makes it hard for you developers to really put your all in them? Because for all the stories I've had, mm. Anyone that is being developed in Chad Dondo, somehow they always go back to Chad Dondo. So yeah, I, maybe you don't reap from the benefits of your sweat. Yeah, so mm. I, I think that's, that's what I was, I was telling you that yeah. uh, we moved on now. That when, if you're coming, I'm going to add value on you. Mm. At least I'll need you for five years. Yeah. 
You lock them in for that period yeah, of time. Lock them so that yes, we invest in you. You're the best for you, for the club, mm. for Uganda, and then you can choose where the next destination will be. Because that that's what will, would happen. And sometimes you come work with a player, and then later they go. You saw at Cobbs, uh, Josiah Sempeke. Yes. Yes, Josiah Sempeke was at Namiriango, in yes. Levo, in Box. Came to Makere College. Makere College as yeah, well, so yes. That's the time we worked with him as Rams. Yeah. Makere College, Erevo, put him into Rams Academy. We got on to the Rams team. Okay. Uh, played a few games in the league and then Cobbs was like, uh, come back home. Come back. This yes. Is our home. Yes. Yeah, of course. I'm as an after, like, okay. Mm. Yeah, like so this I week, used... <laughs> yeah. this week I've had so many Cobbs guys uh, claiming Gavin Mutara. Hey. That is a Cobbs guy. Is a Cobbs guy. After all the work they are After seeing, the work seeing yes. in Rhinos. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's something about those big teams. Yeah. When you finally yeah. start to blossom, they own you. start to blossom, they want to own you. Yeah. <laughs> so you see, uh, quite a number of warriors. I think the yeah. they have there is Caledo. Caledo, yes. Players before a Caledo. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, they had a, a season of Mandela there. Yeah, even Musisi. Yeah. Uh, Musisi, actually, we. Requested warriors loan us. We see, see oh. just keeps yeah. bouncing from both clubs. Yeah, so he, <laughs> yeah. So this so originals from warriors came uh. to Rams for loan is there. It's because these are clubs that have had a, a good relationship since we yeah. had the shield. Yes. Yeah. So we have dual players all over. Okay. You know, and uh, right now, actually, we are going to bring much better uh, players out there. Because now at least we've aligned the system, our focus. All the players we're producing out there for one stage. Yeah, so we don't want the national team coaches to say we don't have players. All players are going to savings. All players are going. They are not. Yeah. We're producing enough for them to pick in the next two three years. Because yeah, I think right now, even this very year. There are prospects I see, I know by the end of the season, they should have their collapse to the national team. We already have one on the current team, Opileni Hosanna. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, in, in that setup. The seven setup. He has broken into the, the main sevens team. Unfortunately, he had sustained uh, an injury from the first circuit. Mm. Yeah, so we had to put him off to rest and recover, and he has recovered fully. Yeah, it's just awaiting to be re-unleashed again. Yeah, and uh, we see a lot more prospects. Yeah, not all heroes wear capes. Some are just rams. They <laughs> do their job on the ground, particularly having uh, very many development uh, players who they bring up the ranks. And then for one reason or another, you get to know their history later on when you hear that they played for, for rams or they had their foundation in rams. I mean, like several but I think you mentioned Victor Adia started before you had even joined, and uh, all these players and the like. So it's Felix good to be. Eh? Felix Rubega as well. Wow. So after Smack, he. Oh, he was it in S4? I think. No, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Mm. So this guy's almost, he's almost the same. It was not Rubega. It was Drake Muyodi. Oh, Drake Muyodi, yes. Drake Muyodi. I remember Drake Muyodi. Yeah, he played for Pirates, he was yes. Another explosive player there. Yeah. He was an explosive yeah. fire, fire guy. So those are some of the players who want. So Rams has been there. Wow. So the academy goal Just is still on. Just making it better. Just making it better. Maybe Immaculate also asked this question, said that you would answer. What do we have to say about uh, your Chigezi Sevens? Chigezi Sevens. Actually, uh, Chigezi held two rugby Sevens. We started them in 2018. Uh, the objective was to grow a unique local rugby tournament and push it to international level. That was the main thing. Okay. And uh, we've moved even through the lockdown. At least we've been able, our first objective was to be that in the first five years, in the first five years, we should have uh, a team from Chigezi region, playing at least in the regional yeah. uh, league. Uh, it's very fortunate, but this is the fifth year. We have three teams from Chigezi region, not just a team. 
You have the Chigel Silverbacks, uh, which is playing in the Western League men. You have the Cavalry Badge Princess, the female team, yeah. uh, which even played in the uh, National for Women Sevens. And also there's a team from Kisoro called Kisoro Jaguars. And uh, this has created and spurred the growth of rugby in the region. Uh, we were able to first host the first two, 2018, 2019. Uh, 2020, we didn't have rugby, yeah. you know. And 2021, we hosted the national circuit. And uh, I think it was uh, a very, very, yes, it was return to play. Yeah. But I think it was one of the best circuits, circuits yeah. that we had as national sevens. Uh, 2022, because of the crash of calendars, we had it as a regional tournament. Mm. Uh, but 2023, we are starting the international tournament. We've invited teams from Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania, Congo, and Western Kenya. We already started to have interactions. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. A thousand Hills and Rams differ from Rwanda. I've already confirmed that okay. situation. That's and dope. then uh, Burundi mm. has also confirmed to send a team. I think uh, Tanzania, they replied. Mm. And we're waiting their confirmation to the team from Western Kenya. And the rest will be Uganda because we want to grow it beyond the region. Uh, we have, over the years, we've built partnerships. Uh, next year, we expect to have a university team from USA. Okay. Yeah, and uh, also a team from New Zealand. It will not be a club, but it will be a team of rugby players because there's a our one of the people who's working in Kavale is from New Zealand, has played rugby. Okay. He's a brother to Coltman. Mm. And uh, even after the, the two weeks ago, I was in Kavale, he came, he donated uh, five balls. Okay. Uh, to continue on the development of rugby in Kavale, mm. uh, to go to schools and community centers. So we really want to make this a Ugandan international rugby. And uh, since 2018, now people have been on board uh, to enable Rams to grow to this uh, tournament. Uh, we had our first partners, Minister Faris. We have individuals who have supported us. Uh, uh, Godwin Kayang, he was not president then. Yeah. But he supported the cause. Yes. Alex Karimugogu okay. supported the cause. Yeah, giving us both finances. I yeah, see that at least they think it off. Really grateful because if it wasn't for them, always the start is the hardest thing. Yeah, the start is the yeah, hardest. If it wasn't for them, I think we couldn't have gone to this far, including the regional, also the partners on ground in media, like Voice of Kigezi. Okay. So uh, this year, we shall also have both men and women. Okay. On the main event that's on 16th September and then on Friday 15th we shall have the legacy tournament this is for age grade and schools both primary secondary and then the community center yeah, so we call upon uh, people who have rugby the fans uh, the rugby clubs uh, to come and test the high altitude experience. Mm. The high field of Uganda. <laughs> okay, that's 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 good to hear. It's good to hear that the Chigezi Sevens is still on the map. And then maybe as we come to our conclusions here, uh, maybe I'll just ask Immaculate, um, from the ladies' rugby perspective, what do you think can be done to make it better so that your experience as your club, and also for women who play rugby, is made easier for those who want to join and those who are still playing. Thank you. I think um, what men can do, women can do in rugby, yes. because there is nothing that has changed when we are playing the sport. So the opportunities the men get, the women should also get. I am happy that the National Sevens, they are really trying to do it, yes. unless the first years. So I applaud the ladies in the union for the progress. 
Mm, another thing is, I think what we are doing, the clubs who come and fetch our players, mm. I think the union should work on it as how we requested, so that we also grow our clubs. You may find a club use who don't have uh, enough resources. So if you come promise a player who is in senior five, you promise heaven and earth. So for her, she will think the greener pastures the other end. And after reaching there, things are different. So by the time she realizes I have to go back to my mother club, it's late, you know how ladies be, and up swala. So such things. Eh? So uh, we can look into it as the union as rugby in Uganda and let clubs be. Yeah, we support clubs here and there. We find a club is struggling alone, but when it comes to calling up our players, even give instructions, we need so and so. These are our players. If we want, we can deny them. But mm. we let we let the players also get the different opportunities. Mm. Maybe a message to your youth fans. For the youth players and fans outside there, we promise that uh, the team is just three years old. But with the time, it's going to grow and you really enjoy. You may find uh, it was in the next four years, the Black Pulse. Yes. So Black keep, Pulse is now watching. on notice. Let them watch out. They are now on notice. <laughs> Be careful. There's a team buffering here for you. Jude, uh, as we sign off, uh, Rams, what a journey for you guys. Wish you all the best, but uh, just a few remarks for your fans as you prepare for your Chadondo Sevens and the others to come. Okay, thank you, Edwin. Uh, I'd like to first thank the Bad Cat yeah. for this invitation and for this initiative. Yeah. I think these are some of the things that have been missing in Uganda rugby. Okay. Yeah, to spread the mm. game out there to the masses. I thank you for the mileage that you give rugby. Yeah, it has really, 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 at least the, 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 the word is reaching certain areas where by the time reach at least people have and in this era of uh, social media smartphone at least you're doing a great job thank you so much yeah to our fans and supporters uh, thank you for supporting rams uh, for standing by us in the league that went tough because we had those games where they would always come close but there's no way uh, but we promise you that uh, the club is on the right path. You can start to see the result as sevens we started on the road, but you have been improving by each circuit. And it's bound to happen. Yeah, I promise that the objective for next second, we are talking that group A yeah. of child of the sevens. So whoever is coming should come expecting the fire. Uh, prepare, mark that date and prepare to come and Support Rams and enjoy the good rugby. If you're in Group A, be very careful. You have been put on notice. Rams is Hannah Rams. Group A that has cobs and heathens. Hey. <laughs> very interesting group. I can't wait for Chad Dodo Sevens, by the way. It will be a blast. Uh, Ruben. Maybe on the space, eh? yeah. when we were trying to find out intro songs, they, we, were talking, we were wondering what Rams' intro song when they are getting onto the pitch is. Someone say, what song did they say? Batman from Kamocha. Is that That's true? <laughs> is it Batman from Kamocha? It's very true. Okay. Yeah, okay. We fear no intimidation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we've hosted drums today, basically telling us about the academy, how they have grown players, how they have groomed players, and how they continue to do so. Uh, there has been a call to have ladies from Africa, box and complex, and the hostels. They are nearby Makere to join in. They struggle to have uh, the youth come the new Black Pearls in three to four years. So from the Fat Cats, we sign out. Take care till next time. <laughs>